Hi everyone, welcome back to another Procrastinator podcast. She's playing with her dog. My name is Jane, and I am your host today. Joining me today, oh, is my doggo. Hello, Mr. Boone. Mr. Boone is named Boone, and that means noodle in Vietnamese. It's not really pronounced Boone, but we pronounce it Boone. And it's Mr. Boone. Okay, so let's see. I don't know the best way to sit. I'll just say like this. Um, in the back here, you can see this new enclosure. That is my new isopod enclosure. And maybe I'll talk about that later. But this is a knitting podcast where I talk about things that I'm knitting. And I share with you my progress and things like that. So stick around. And yeah, we'll just get started today. Anyways, okay, yes, so today I have lots of acquisitions to share and um, some progress, pretty significant progress to share as well. So I'm very excited to get into it. So yeah, first we'll talk about works in progress. Well, I don't have any finished objects, so there is none of that, but um, yeah, let's do works in progress. I guess I do. This is a half-finished object, I suppose, because it's one sock in a pair. This is Manos de Uruguay yarn. Their fingering weight yarn. Really pretty. I haven't put it on my feet yet, but I'm sure they'll be a good fit. This is Crazy Sock Lady. Vanilla socks. 620 round 2 by 2 Cuff, 60 round leg, heel flap gusset, kitchener toe, rounded toe maybe, wedge toe, I don't know. Okay, the basic. So last time I think I was, I was at the toe decreases when I was uh, talking to you last, and now I have started the next sock, and this is how far. I am. I thought I was farther along, but I guess not. So yeah, last time was not a great um, place to put a stitch marker, but I feel like now is a good time to do a little stitch marker. So I will do that. Oh, I thought I had another stitch marker, but I guess not. Again, I can give me my tea. Okay, so... Yeah, I thought I had another one, but I think I'll just use this one because this one I want to save for another project that I will show in a little bit. But yeah, this stitch marker I made myself. There used to be two beads, but then it like fell off. So now it's just this one little guy. So <laughs> that's okay, right? Okay, so where should we put you? Um, yeah, again, these are vanilla socks, nothing too special to report back on, but I am really enjoying working with the yarn. I have one more skein of this base, and I think those might end up being my next pair of socks after these. So, yeah, really good. I feel like it's a really squishy yarn. Um, it definitely feels like thicker, more plump than the Malabrigo sock, more similar to Malabrigo Ultimate sock. But I guess that makes sense because I'm, yeah, this has polyamide or plastic um, content as well for durability. Uh, so yeah, I, I really like these colors and I like the socks. So that's progress on my very first whip. My second whip is an, also another thing you've seen before, but I do feel that I've made good progress sense. So for reference, today, the day I'm filming is the day the last podcast episode um, got published. So today is March 22nd. And I filmed the video that you would have seen on March 22nd, um, March 17th. Okay, so this is a whip you will have seen before. And it's my Tokyo shawl. Oh my gosh, it's growing so much. 
I feel like it's so big now. Let me see. Yeah, so the stitch marker is where I was a week ago, or a little over a week ago. But I haven't touched this in a couple days. So yeah, I would say that is uh, about a week's worth of knitting for like an hour or so a day, maybe. So yeah. Yay, I'm loving all the colors. At this point, I th I've used, have I used all the colors? Light green, medium green, dark green, gray. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. At this point, I have used all the colors. So these are all the colors that are going to end up in the final shawl. But uh, yeah, it's been fun working it up. And I recommend it. Okay, so now we will move the stitch marker. I've talked about this shawl in depth, so if you are a new viewer, I would just recommend going back um, maybe two episodes. Um, and I talk about the details of the yarn and things a lot more in those episodes. But uh, again, as usual, recently. Everything is linked below. My Ravelry project pages are pretty well updated as well. So, um, and that of course has yarn information, pattern information, etc. So I would go there, but this is the state of my shawl at the moment, which is kind of crazy to think about because this is like, I would say if I was making a sweater, I'm halfway done with a sweater. Right. Oh, so awesome. Aw, look how pretty. Okay. This is not how it's gonna lay, obviously, but it's nice, right? Okay, so that is that. Alright, and then the last whip I have to show is something a little unexpected. So last week I told you that I was going to make a Sophie scarf dupe with this yarn which is a uh, swishy cashmere dream dream in colors swishy cashmere something like that again ravelry project will be linked down below but you know i was just thinking about it the practicality of something like a sophie scarf the color i don't know i mean i don't think light purple is the most flattering color on me but I like it as a color, so it is really difficult, but um, yeah. So I think this is like 10 or maybe 20% cashmere, and the rest is merino nylon. And yeah, so I was gonna make a scarf, I thought about it, and I, I just didn't think it fit with my lifestyle, whatever that means. So then I went to look for tank tops, because, you know, what kind of project really can you do with a single skein of 100 grams of fingering weight yarn besides socks? And I didn't want these to be socks. In retrospect, I think they could have been socks and I would have been happy with it because as I'm knitting it up, I realize it's not a um, as solid of a dye job as I thought it would be. So I think like the slight variation, I would have been happy with them as socks. But that said, I decided to do something else and I'm very happy with how it's turning out so far. So I will hold it up to the camera. I started this maybe three days ago and this is my progress. So the progress I would say is significant. So as you can see, it's a tank top. This is Alright, see here, ribbed to your measure by Windwood Farm. So yeah, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a ribbed tank top. The pattern um, has both top down and bottom up, which I thought was very nice. Um, this goes from bus sizes, 
like your actual bust size of 28 to 68 um, inches. So it's quite a large size range. And yeah, I'm really excited to see where this goes. I obviously wanted to knit it top down because ideally I want to knit as much of the skein as I possibly can. Um, yeah, so I've knit the back panel, the front panel, have joined in the round recently, and I'm now knitting the rest of the body, and I'm just gonna knit until it is complete. So that is what I'm saving this stitch marker for. It's a nice yellow, so I feel like it will go nicely with this purple yarn. There you go. Um, pattern wise, I'm really happy with it. I, because there was so much to do all the time, like, you know, if you might be able to tell from the shape, you know, you're always um, increasing pretty much. So up until I joined in the round, it was like never a boring moment. So that was really fun because I'm always like uh, doing this and that. I um, really appreciate all the design details. That I feel like it's, I mean, it's a simple tank top, but it still feels really um, refined, really finished, and I'm really liking it so far. Um, I did get a little confused with the pattern because I read it a little incorrectly, so then I had to rip back and uh, re-knit some parts of it. But that was on me for not reading it uh, carefully enough. Um, it's really interesting because when I join in the round, you can kind of definitely tell, <laughs> and my gauge is a lot more smooth after joining versus working flat, but I'm sure, I'm, I'm co pretty confident that it'll all block out, um, but yeah, I'm really happy with it, really happy with the fabric, I'm not sure once I wear it, it does feel a little sheer, but I feel I'm hoping it's dark enough that it'll be okay. Um, yeah, what else do I have to say about this? I Yeah, I would really recommend the pattern. I'm having a good time knitting it up. But from now on, it's, you know, two by two rib in the round. So I'm sure it's about to get tedious um, soon. But yes, something that working on this tank top before I joined in the round and also on the shawl, something I, um, that these two projects reminded me of that I very often forget because it's so much easier and smoother to knit in a, an endless sea of stocking it in the round or just all knit uh, stitches. Um, but what it also means is, you know, it's endless. You're kind of just like knitting to a measurement or it's kind of hard to keep track of what row you're on and things like that. But when you're knitting flat, you know, there's always, you know, a knit row and then a purl row if you're doing stuck in net or something like that. And um, it's very clear the wrong side and the right side, if that makes sense. I don't really know, but it, it kind of helps break up patterns in a way that makes it like chunk by chunk. And something to look forward to almost because it's like I finish a knit row and then I'm like a, a pearl row but I kind of like have to force myself to get to the pearl row because I always want to end well no I usually end on the wrong side right of the work so because the shawl is stuck in it and reverse stuck in it that means sometimes I'm ending on a knit row which is really annoying but I guess what I mean to say is it's like when you're in the pearl row, you're wanting to get through it so you can get back to the knit row. When you're at the knit row, you're appreciating how fun knitting is. But then, you know, you have to do the pearl row in order to get to the next knit row. So, in a way, it helps um, make it less monotonous. But, you know, knitting is still better. But, I mean, I, I feel like that's just one thing I learned to appreciate with the pattern. And and it really helps. I mean, more than anything, it really helps, like, in the pattern to keep track 
of where you are and to uh, mark mark your your rows in the pattern. I don't know if that made sense, but I really appreciate flat knitting for that aspect of it. I don't think I would feel the same way necessarily if it was only stocking it knit flat if that makes sense because this was ribbing so you know either way I was going to knit in purl but there was a right side and a wrong side so I was doing things in sets of two I guess that's what I'm getting at and you know there were there was an increased row and a, a normal row or you know a few pairs of rows before the next row where you make a change that sort of thing so it really broke up the pattern and with the shawl it's as I said it's um like sections of stockinette and reverse stockinette so I feel like it's exciting because I'm wanting to one I'm wanting to join in a new color and then I you know when the the stockinette and reverse stockinette flip um it's like fun to change up what I'm doing but if I was doing an all stockinette shawl or a fabric that was all stockinette no increases no nothing like and it was just knit a row purl a row knit a row purl a row I don't know if I would have the same excitement but um so far I am surprisingly enjoying working plat is I guess what I'm trying to say so yeah, with this um, tank top, this is actually my last uh, work in progress. <laughs> so yeah, but um, what did I want to say? I have tried, I tried it on, I tried it on before I joined in the round and I thought it was a pretty good fit. Um, I wish I had those like barber cords so I could try it on for you now without having to like transfer it onto like a massive cable or something but you know you might be able to tell it has a lot of stretch so I'm not worried about it fitting although it does look very small so yeah that is that and you will see an update soon oh this pattern I should also say does uh, come with instructions with how to modify it to become a dress so I feel like that is also a nice, um, a nice feature of the pattern as well. Okay. So now we will move on to acquisitions because I've gotten some very lovely gifts recently. The first of which that we can talk about right now is this cup. So this is, um, I believe it's double walled, so it's an, in, a ceramic. So it's uh, insulated, if that makes sense. Like you can pour boiling water in here. The outside will still get warm, but not hot to the, not like burning, like you would expect from a, a normal ceramic cup. But this is a ceramic cup um, from T Forte. That. William's mom got me. It has a lid to cover it to keep the tea warm, um, but it also comes with its own, what is this, like tea brewing thing, and it has this really comfortable uh, thing, and the uh, lid has a slit so that when it's like inside, it fits over it really well, and then of course the lid can also double as a dish for you to put your brewing thing on top of. Um, yeah, it's just really well designed. There's a uh, a flange inside the cup that fits this perfectly. So yeah, it's really well constructed. Uh, I got it today in the mail and I really like it. It also came with some tea, so um, from Tea Forte. I don't know if I said that already. But the tea is their cherry blossom tea, which is what I'm having here with a little bit of milk because that's how I prefer to drink my tea, uh, is with a splash of milk or cream, um, no sugar. And uh, I'm really liking it. It's very aromatic. It's very um, floral and good. So, yeah. 
Williams mom said it's one of her favorite green teas. So check it out if you are a tea drinker or are interested. I think you have to get it directly from their website. I don't think they um, retail anywhere, but I could be wrong. Okay, so that was a very special treat, but not super knitting related. But William's mom is the person that got me other things that are knitting and yarn related. So the first thing, oh, and I should say, these gifts are part of, well, they are like a, a goodie package that she sent separately because, you know, shipping and all. It wouldn't make sense to ship it all to her and then for her to package up a package only to ship it to me, you know? Um, but anyways, this is like a um, little bundle of things to celebrate me getting into graduate school, which is a very exciting life development. So um, yeah, I got into grad school. I'm going to grad school next year, next school year. So in, a, in like six months or something. So that is something to think about, huh? Um, yeah, I may have mentioned it already. I definitely mentioned I was like applying and considering, but not that I was going. But maybe I did. Maybe I did. I'm going to Cal State East Bay, which is in the Bay Area of California, if you're not familiar. And um, yeah, I'm really excited. So this is kind of like, it was very kind of her to send me all these things. So the first is this. This is the Coco Knits Sweater Workshop uh, Knitting Top Down Seamless Tailored Sweaters by Julie Weisenberger. So William's mom had got this for herself maybe a year ago, maybe two years ago now. I'm not super uh, confident about the timeline, but she is really in love with this Coco Knits method and she was the first person who talked to me about it but since then I've like heard people mention here and there and I've certainly seen lots of cocoa knits um patterns as well as notions and things like that all over our social media and in yarn stores as well so um yeah this was really kind of her uh this is their you know sweater workshop pattern book I guess it has a few Maybe, yeah. It has a number of patterns in here, sweaters. So it has the Emma, which is the one I'm most interested in. Emma version A, Emma version B, Emma version C. The Tilda and the Tolula. The Lizzie and Molly version B. I'm also interested in the Molly version B. Okay, and I think that's it. So the whole, the Coco Knits method is its own method, I believe. Like, it's a special way of, like, constructing these top-down sweaters that are seamless. So I'm sure that means you're increasing in size. It's like a different take on a raglan, maybe. I mean, it's not at all a raglan, but if, you, if you're not familiar, maybe that's something I would um, kind of compare it to there's you know some sort of shoulder and neck shaping and arm shaping and it's all you pick it up and it's all you know seamless so that seems really interesting um and yeah this is the I think this is the molly version b that I said I was interested in and then emma version one is the other one but um I think the method is supposed to be you know tailored to you so the um it has like worksheets so that you can like fill out your own numbers and figure out, you know, what you need to, how you need to knit it, what, uh, what adjust adjustments you can make to make something that is tailored to your body. It has suggestions for how to adjust any pattern, but especially these Coco Knits ones, um, how to adjust your pattern for your body type or your shape or, you know, if you're... Yeah, just, just your, your body to fit and has tips on that. So that seems super cool, super exciting. So yeah, I'm excited to look through and kind of, um, yeah, and kind of make 
make one of these one of these days so yeah this is the first thing I got was the Cocoa Knits sweater workshop the second thing I got is another book and it is this the Knitter's Handy Book of Top-Down Sweaters, Basic Designs in Simple Sizes and Gauges by Anne Budd. So as the title suggests, it is just recipes, I would call these, for different types of top-down sweater constructions. Um, it includes seamless yoke, raglan, set-in sleeve, and saddle shoulder. You know what, now that I think about it, the Coco Knits method, is probably more similar to a set-in sleeve or a, sh a saddle shoulder. <laughs> I've never done any of those, so I couldn't make that comparison, but looking at it, I think it's probably more similar to those. Um, from this, this is kind of like how to knit these basic constructions with suggestions for um, stitch count for uh, pretty much... for, for over many gauges and many sizes. So it's um, it's kind of like the Muscle Burra, if you're familiar with the Muscle Burra, where you knit it based on your gauge. It's like this as well. So um, obviously with the Muscle Burra, it's a little bit easier because um, you can start knitting right away. You don't have to knit a gauge swatch, but for uh, the recipes or patterns in this book, I believe you'd make a gauge, gauge swatch and from your gauge swatch you would be like okay my gauge is six stitches per inch so this is it kind of has charts like this so you would look oh I have six um stitches per inch so this is how much yarn I want to make if I want to make a size for a 40 inch chest that kind of thing right um yeah so it has adult sizes and children's sizes I believe at least for some of them. Yeah, adult and child sizes. So the child sizes start at 26 inch and the adult sizes end at 54. So that is a huge size range as well. But again, these are very it's like recipes for these patterns. So that seems super interesting. I am interested in knitting a circular yoke sweater so that is most likely what I will first use this book for um and yeah kind of like the cocoa knits method it, it kind of tells you how to it's a it's a design book I guess a reference book so it tells you suggestions on how to alter a garment to fit what you want from a sweater um the sweater I'm interested in making is this one I don't like the bottom half but the top the top half kind of reminds me of something that I've seen before online but I don't quite remember what it is but um I like it I like the little eyelets so I think I might go for that one or the other circular yoke does also look pretty cool I wouldn't do these colors necessarily, but it's like a slip stitch circular yoke situation. So that looks good as well. Oops, sorry. So yeah, I'm excited to have this handy, handy book as it implies. All right, and the last acquisition that I have to share is yarn. So it's always good to get a box of yarn, right? The yarn I received is from um, is from William's mom, but the yarn is wool in the gang. <laughs> so I don't want anyone thinking I got yarn from the company. <laughs> but okay, so wool in the gang, and. It is this. Um, it is their Al Pacino Merino Lilac Punch. So, yes. Yeah, a lot of purple in my life right now. Um, I got seven balls of this. This is a bulky weight yarn, I'm pretty sure. 
It is 60% merino, 40% baby alpaca. And it is really soft. William's mom says this is her favorite yarn uh, to work with, like a new favorite, besides for Malabrigo Mecca. I'm not sure if she said they tied or, you know, but you know, top two for sure, right? Um, yeah, it is very soft. She has shown me the yarn before and I, you know, so I like, I've known that it would be really soft, uh, as well as finished garments in the yarn. And I think she said it does pill a little or kind of easy to pill, but otherwise like really nice to work with. Very, very soft. So yeah, I mean, I have seven of these, so I feel like that is a sweater's quantity, right? Um, except I don't know if I want to make a sweater with it, but what else would I make with it? So I'm not too sure. I'm, I'm considering maybe even like buying another color of it to pair with it and make something striped or just something, but I don't know. I, I have not, uh, gravitated towards working on a solid with a solid color. Um, I guess that's not true, but I don't know. I don't know, I'm having a hard time imagining a big sweater in this, but who knows? Who knows? I could just make another <laughs> raglan, but we'll see. Maybe I'll try a cocoa knits method. Maybe the Emma will come out of this. I'm not too sure, but I got seven of these, so it's kind of similar to the purple of my, my raglan a sweater that I just finished a couple months ago. But at the same time, I don't know. Lots of pinks and purples in my life recently, but that's okay. All right. Okay, well, I think that's it in terms of what I've been working on and things that are related to yarn. Um... Yeah, so thank you for watching if you've made it this far. If you could just hit the like button if you found this enjoyable and fun to um, hear me chat about these things and let me know what you're working on in the meantime. I'm going to move on to things that I've been watching or listening to as I um, as I am have been knitting or just things I've been watching lately. But, you know, when I'm watching something, when I'm watching something, I'm always knitting as well. So... The first honorable mention, or the first mention, I guess, is Clone Wars. So William and I started watching Clone Wars, which is a TV series that started a Star Wars animated TV series that started, I think, in 2008 and ended pretty recently, like within the past five years or so, I believe. Um, but there are also some like spin-off animated Star Wars shows that follow the clones, if I'm not mistaken. Um, recently. That recently came out. So, you know, the universe is continuing and the episodes are really short, 20 minute, so pretty self-contained episodes and um, they've been really fun to watch um, and I've been knitting during them. And I like it. I recommend it. It's um, surprisingly nuanced for, and uh, not violent necessarily, but, you know, I guess it's set in the Clone Wars. So a lot of people are dying and get, like, killed and shot down and stuff. So there is a lot of death. Um, but I was saying... It is surprisingly nuanced for a children's TV show, and it definitely pushes back against the narrative of, you know, one side being, like, purely good or the other side being purely evil. It um, adds a lot of, like, perspectives into, like, the sides of the um, characters in Star Wars, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, that's been really enjoyable to watch. Um, we've also been watching the new Mandalorian season, uh, which we liked, but last week's episode, so the week, like, of the 17th, I guess, like, maybe 
17th. Okay, so the March 15th episode, I think. That must have been the last one. Yeah, March 15th episode was so terrible. Like, so terrible. I think this is the third episode. It was so bad. Like, genuinely. Like, it started off so strong, so good. And then, if you know, you know. Like, that middle section. I don't know what that was. We could have skipped it completely. It was so terrible. Like, I kept thinking they'd switch back. But they never, sw they never switched back until the very end and I'm like that could have been a great 15 minute episode I would have been fine with a 15 minute episode but why did they add in 45 minutes of nonsense uh okay so Mandalorian and yeah we rewatched so I've seen the Star Wars original trilogy at least three times now and I'm finally, like, I'm finally understanding it. So, yeah, I feel like before the lore was always way too complex for me. I was like, just not understanding anything. But I would say within the past year, my understanding of the Star Wars universe has finally like come together. Like it's all making sense. It's all like the timeline is finally matching up in my brain. Like I'm finally getting it. So that's good um another show i've been watching is shadow and bone <laughs> shadow and bone is a netflix original series based on leah bardugo's books i don't know what they're called but i know her books are like grisha verse or something i don't really know grisha universe grisha verse um what do I have to say about that? Uh, it is not a good show. Is it a good show? I don't know. Like, sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't. I watched season one. I liked it enough. I really dislike the main character. There are kind of like two plot lines or two groups of characters. Um, because even though the show is called Shadow and Bone, it actually follows characters from Lee Bardugo's Shadow and Bone series as well as her Six of Crows series and let's just say every time it's Six of Crows content it's significantly better just more interesting more relatable more better just better and everything that has to do with Alina that whole plot line is just tired to me and I don't like it and it's just like unnecessary but um yeah because the crows they're like a they do heists and i love heist stuff and it's really fun to watch all the parts of the crows heisting and doing their thing and when we switch back to the main plot which is more about like the battle between good and evil like will she be able to reunite reunite the nation and things like that like more political big big fight rather than you know the the everyday conflict of a group of people and their immediate like uh people in power if that makes sense so but whatever i did finish season two it does look like the next season might be interesting um but it's a little ridiculous but you know it's only eight episodes like it's fine um, yes, and what else? Shadow and Bone, and now, oh, I watched the Luther movie, I really liked it. Um, it's kind of spoopy, spooky, but I really like it. Um, I love, like, mystery detective kind of shows, so, yeah, that was fun, and it was very action-y as well. And right now I'm watching Next in Fashion with my little sister. And that is very fun as well. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's just fun. Um, and then the last thing I'm watching is a show called The Recruit. It is also a Netflix original. I think that's the last thing I'm watching yeah the recruit netflix original tv show that unfortunately stars noah 
centipede i don't know his last name <laughs> i don't know his last name i'm sorry he's actually he's great he's a great actor in this show but i just like if i had known that he had he was the leading role in this show i don't think i would have watched it but because i didn't know it kind of took me by surprise i was like already a little bit interested so i just kept watching um but uh noah plays i feel like his breaking roles were uh the male love interest in a lot of netflix originals including pretty sure kissing booth but now i'm like maybe he wasn't um but definitely to all the boys i loved before and a couple others and i'm just like i don't know that was not like nope so and yeah anyways so um he plays a much different character he plays a, law a lawyer for the cia so it's more conspiracy um drama politics power mystery i guess a little de a little detective work as well action definitely so um yeah i'm liking it a lot more <laughs> than i uh than I would if it was, you know, a rom-com with with Noah with Noah in it. So, yeah, that is good. I would recommend The Recruit as well. Um, yeah, so that's all I've been watching while I've been knitting up a storm. I'm really excited about the tank top. I feel like I'm losing a little steam because now it's it's ribbing until I run out of yarn, but. I am pretty excited to finish and see what it looks like. Um, yeah. What else? I don't think I'm gonna cast on anything new, but never say never. Um, the shawl, I just like don't. Ant I'm not even halfway through, and I just don't anticipate finishing it anytime soon. I feel like the strategy might just, as I've said over and over, <laughs> is to just take it like one section at a time and not put too much pressure about like finishing it um but yeah shawl is going well and uh the tank top yeah my next cast on i think will be a cardigan and we'll see we'll see where that goes um in terms of podcasts like normal audio podcasts i've been listening to the the vile files right nick vile's podcast i think he was like the bachelor on the bachelor for a season or two i don't really know but um his podcast i first started listen did i talk about this already i don't really know but i first started listening because he has on like former um people who are on love is blind and then more recently perfect match <laughs> so i was watching his podcasts to kind of get the info on those cast members um but he has a segment in those podcasts where he gives like um relationship advice uh on all sorts of like relationships and i really liked his like advice giving style and i love love listening to advice columns and just like the whole concept i just love it so i really appreciated his responses to all the um questions that he had received and then i um found out that he also has like episodes where it's purely an advice episode um so that's why I've been listening to while knitting as well and while doing other things around the house like cooking, cleaning, chores, etc. So I really do recommend it. Um, yeah, I feel I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I was going to say, but. It is um, definitely very interesting to hear what. To hear different perspectives to hear about different people's problems how they think through those problems and um yeah it's very interesting so i would recommend i don't really watch any of his, he has like recap episodes like other stuff like i don't really care about that i'm here for the advice column and if you have 
a reality TV star that I'm interested in on <laughs> sort of thing. But yeah, I think I think that is pretty much it. That's what I've been up to. Um, oh yeah, did I say I wanted to talk more about grad school? I got into grad school. I'm going to grad school. I'm moving to the Bay Area. Um, yeah, so that will be exciting. I'll probably live with some roommates, hopefully and start school. My program is a three-year program, so we will see. We will see. Um, yeah. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for watching and sticking around. Um, yeah. I hope you have a great rest of your day and you get to knit and do things to your heart's content. And I hope to see you in the next episode. Oh, I said I was going to talk about this. This is an isopod enclosure that I made with William and the video is on his channel, but I'll link it down below as well. It's so much fun to make. I have little isopods in there and they're really pretty. And if you don't know what isopods are, they're also known as roly polies, if you are more familiar with that term, or pill bugs. Um, but they're really pretty and... In nature, they break down um, dead leaves or just organic matter, and then their poop is good for the soil. It's very nutrient-rich or something like that. I don't really know, but they're just pretty to look at. And now they have a fun little house. Before, they were living just in a little Tupperware <laughs> container situation because I knew I was going to build something for them, and this is what I've built. It doesn't look that... Um, impressive here I feel like but in William's video I feel like you really get a sense of how we built it and um what it looks like so check that out okay yes all right thank you so much for sticking around I will chat to you in the next episode until then I hope you are well and bye